This is Gigabyte B760M Air Elite XAX motherboard and it is the most affordable motherboard out of the entire X-Gen motherboard lineup from Gigabyte. So in this video, let's review this motherboard and try to understand why is it so good and why I like it so much. Let's begin. If you're not familiar with Gigabyte motherboards, the X-Gen is the most recent motherboard lineup from Gigabyte for Intel motherboards. They came to the market with 14th gen CPUs and I actually have a review of a Z790 Elite X motherboard. It's a decent video about this X-Gen lineup. So this motherboard is also X-Gen, but it's B760. And it also comes with all the good stuff that the X-Gen come with, like 8-layer PCB with good RAM overclocking and quite decent VRM. And many other X-Gen things that we're gonna discuss a little bit later. And, as you might have already noticed, it's fully white, making it an excellent choice for a good full white build. And though it is affordable compared to other X-Gen boards, it's not exactly very affordable. But we'll discuss that later. As you might have already noticed, it's MATX, while all other X-Gen motherboards are full ATX size. And the PCB itself is not 100% white, I would call it a little closer to beige than fully white. The aluminum radiators are also partially colored white, and it has Gigabyte logos everywhere, reminding you that this is a Gigabyte board. And even the GPU release mechanism is also colored white, and this whole thingy here is very convenient when GPU is installed. The main VRM radiator is also partially colored white, and this Aeora sign is also RGB. And though you can definitely make it look like unicorn vomit, it can also look like this, a single color, if you like it more. But honestly, I prefer unicorn vomit. One of the cool X-Gen features that M.2 heatsinks can be removed and installed back without any tools, just using your hands. As for the heatsinks themselves, well, they're nothing special, but they definitely can cool a 4.0 decent SSD. SSD. They're maybe not thick enough for like a very power hungry 5.0 M.2, but you're not installing this one in this board because it doesn't have any 5.0 M.2 slots. And just like with VRM heatsinks, the M.2 installation is also toolless, which is really cool. And the other side of the motherboard is also quite good looking. And that PCI Express armor plate is what makes sure your GPU doesn't pull out your PCI Express slot. Let's look at the board I.O. The integrated sound is ALC897, it's cheap integrated sound, nothing special. On the bottom of the board there's front panel audio, dual 5V RGB ports, single 12V RGB port, dual USB 2.0 ports, single 4-pin fan header, EQ flash plus button for flashing bias without CPU, and a reset button. On the right side there's four SATA ports, an HDMI port for cases that have screens in them, a USB 3.0 header and a Type-C 10 gigabit front panel header and a sneaky 4-pin fan header behind the 24-pin. And on the top there's one more 5 volt RGB and two fan headers, the fourth one being a very sneaky one. The back side has very decent amount of USB ports, four of them are 2.0, Three of them are 5 gigabit, one of them is 10 gigabit, and there's a 20 gigabit Type-C port, and one HDMI and one display port. As for the PCI Express, this board has, well, for an MATX it has more than enough. There are two M.2s, both of them are running 4.0 lanes. The main by 16 slot is running 5.0 lanes, and it's always 16, it never cuts to 8. And the bottom one is 4 4.0 lanes, and to me that's more than enough. So the VRAM on this board is actually quite good. It's 14 power stages combined into 7 phases, plus 1 plus 1, all 60 amp DR MOS. Unfortunately the board was not mine and I couldn't take it apart to take VRM pictures, so you'll have to take my word for it. The CPU power is 8 plus 4, but 8 is more than enough for something like 14600K. For a 14700K or more, please install a 4-pin. But I wouldn't really recommend putting a 14700K in this motherboard. For gaming it's totally fine, but if you plan to do multiple hour renders, I would recommend sticking to 14600K. Now let's discuss memory support for this motherboard, because it's a complicated topic. The frequencies highlighted in green are XMP frequencies. It means with 13 14 Gen K CPUs, they will probably work. Drop in the memory sticks, enable XMP, and they should be stable. The yellow ones are manual overclocking. It means, yeah, you can definitely reach those frequencies, but they would require manual RAM tuning. You would have to increase voltages and manually 
adjust timings to reach them. So if you're not ready to do that, just don't buy such memory speeds. They're not just gonna work out of the box. The memory will be unstable and you will have crashes and blue screens. And the memory speeds highlighted in red are reachable by professional overclockers with very, very good bin CPUs, with very good binned memory sticks, so it's not for an average home user. I strongly recommend you stick with 6800. I use this Kingbank Dual 24GB kit. I just enable XMP and it worked just fine. We also did a lot of manual overclocking on my native language channel. I stream a lot there, but I don't stream on this channel yet. But if you can subscribe, and when I'm reaching like a thousand subscribers, I would definitely make a stream here. And you can ask me all kinds of tech questions, so please subscribe to the channel. So the maximum speed with the particular CPU we had was 7600, but we dial it down to 7200 for 24 hour use. And you do not need active cooling for 7200 with decent voltages. So, here's the conclusion about this motherboard. I think it's great, it's really good, and I strongly recommend you get it. Especially if you're building a full white PC, it's gonna look beautiful. But you might be asking, Artyom, but this motherboard is actually a little bit on the expensive side, and I can get a cheap Z790 motherboard for such a price. Why would I even get this? The answer is simple. 14th gen is fully overclocked out of the box from the factory. You can't really squeeze anything else out of it. Maybe an extra 100 megahertz, so it doesn't make sense to buy a Z790 motherboard. So I would get something like this if buying a 14th gen. And I really recommend you buy this board. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer them all. Thank you.